I'm Peanut Tillman, and this is the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. We're in L.A. I got my guy, my uncle, the nephew, the everything you want, the great beard and everything. My guy, Roman Harbour, what's up, baby? What's up? I didn't know I could be your uncle and your nephew at the same time. This is some really crazy Southern <laughs> thing going on right now. But thank you uh, for every uh, all the time for always being there. All of our guests that's always tuning in, whether you're watching or listening, wherever you pick up your podcast at, whether it's Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, give us a like, a follow, give us a review. Do all those little things. Continue to spread the word. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Peanut, who is our guest today? We got a good one. Super Bowl winning champion. He is a part of the infamous no-fly zone defense. He is an undrafted guy. It was He made the all-decade 2010 team. Uh, he's from Kansas. He's an entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chris Harris Jr. to the podcast. Yes, sir. You know, I've got to be honest, Pino, that was pretty good. You never, he hasn't really done that for a lot of our guests. So that was good for you. I, I got to give you I'm the feeling the energy right now. It's love. It's all love. Like, I, I did my yoga this morning. I got my tea right here. It's, I'm feeling it right now. Okay. DB love, too, man. DB love, DB, too. So. That's it. Yeah, That's true. That's true. I, I mean, I'm with it. Um, he said you're from Kansas, but you're from Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, he went to Kansas. I, which is cool to me. That's what I want to get to. Yeah. I mean, like, and you started all four years. Yeah. Yeah, I went in at KU. Um, you know they they had to leave at one corner. And Did he was, was he on like your recruiting visit? I want to know a recruiting visit to Kansas. What's that? Nah, he he wasn't there. <laughs> okay. Um, when I went on my visit to KU, I was probably I didn't have any offers until probably basketball season. Really? I started really? More basketball. Okay. Offers you a little hooper. First. Yeah. Okay. So I had more basketball offers first. And that then, was not in the bio. Yeah, well, yeah. No, people don't, don't know that. that. I got a lot of hit stories. <laughs> Let me see that. So, man, Gino came to our basketball practice, and that's when I got offered. And then during the – it was like a dead season. Nobody was on campus at that time. Yeah. So I went – I kind of went in like a sneaky visit when nobody was up there. It was probably like a couple players that from Kansas that uh-huh. had, had me on the visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see to leave until I got – until I pulled up to campus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. But it was just a, uh, you know, it was just a great spot for me to uh, be able to go and play early, yeah, and play opposite an All American because he was an All American at Correct. that time um, in in his senior year. So uh, it was just a great opportunity to go up there and, and and compete. So what made you choose football over basketball? You always knew yeah. you were a football guy. Uh man, I just knew I wasn't growing. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna get I wasn't no growing. shot. <laughs> yeah, man, I wasn't growing as much as everybody else. You know, um, you see the you see the point guards. You not not too many five eleven point guards in the. League. So I just thought um, a football would be my best way to go. And um, I never really played corner until I got to college. So, Seriously? Yeah, so I didn't know if I was going to play what position in college, you know. So coach was just like, we'll just find you a spot at, def- def- at DB. And, um, and that's pretty much how I just went in there and just went in there and started that corner. That's that's what's up. That's I, I, I like. So what did you play in high school? Was it just hey, I'm so confused. I just played safety, man. I just was like a free, just roam, you know. Okay. And just go back, go find the ball, you know. <laughs> hey, it worked out. This is a true. Yeah. It, just, it worked but, out. How did this is? I, I don't know, know how that, that happens. Like yeah. I'm not. I don't even have football scholarship. I'm playing basketball. They yeah. see me. Hey, look, we just gonna find you a spot out here. Athlete, just whatever. That's how yeah. Ike Taylor was. Ike it's Taylor was like way. that too. Yeah, he started out running back, and then they were just like, "Oh, let's just put him in corner." And then he got drafted. Was a corner. Yeah. Played double digit years in the league. Got him a super. Got him two Super Bowls. At, yeah. uh, Pittsburgh, that's kind of dope. That's kind of dope. It, it's super dope. But, I mean, for you specifically, does it ever get tiring of you being asked about being the undrafted free agent guy that made it, blah, blah, blah? Or are you just like, hey, look, I'm just this football player that made it, probably broke through some odds, but this is who I am and this is who I've got to be. But you, after hearing your high school story, I'm sure you yeah. don't. Oh, man, it's just – uh, it's just part of my journey, you know, especially within the NFL circle. You know, a lot of guys know I ha- how I came in the league. Right. Um, you know, I think I had I had one of the lowest signing bonus, 2,000. <laughs> you know, one of the last guys picked up on our team. Sorry to laugh. Sorry to laugh. Yeah. But, you know, we, that's how we do rookies. Yeah. yeah. You, know I mean? you got to come out Dang there. You got to school. <laughs> stand up on that chair. I stand up on the bonus. $2,000, Kansas University. How did, how did, did they clown you? Doomerville. <laughs> I had some good vets, you know. Yeah, I, had, yeah. uh, I had uh Dawkins, you yeah. know, Champ, uh, you know, Doomerville, uh, DJ Williams, you know, oh, yeah, 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 of, yeah, yeah. A lot of good vets. So Hall of Famers. Yeah, a lot of good vets, man. So 
uh, they didn't really clown me too much. They kind of took me in, you know, couldn't have took care of me like a yeah, little like a little, little brother, man. Yeah, because so, they know you ain't had no bread. Champ knew I didn't have no money, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Champ, come on. Champ, <laughs> Champ take care of me, man. So he had tons of money. So he, he, tons. he definitely take care of me. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So are you officially done with yeah. football and what are you keeping yeah. busy with now outside of some other things? We'll go with Well, I wanted that. to uh, kind of stay – I wanted to stay in shape and stay ready to go last year just in case because I felt like the year before, even with New Orleans, I still played solid. And I thought I would be able to get picked up and play uh, safety or nickel. I mean, I haven't even uh, – Be like Jackson, Kareem Jackson. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance to do that, you know, <laughs> and I'm probably one of the top tacklers in, in my era. I agree. Go back and look. Uh, but it's just, you know, just not having that opportunity. That was probably one day I was probably regretting not being able to play safety a little bit. Yeah. Like a Rondé, getting a transfer from Nickel. Switch over. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't get that opportunity. A lot of so. cats got to steal like four or five years off of that. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to do that, man. <laughs> I played straight 12 years, straight corner. You know what I mean? <laughs> nickel, so. Same. Yeah, so. Same. Yeah, people, same way. I think I could have played safety, but my knees couldn't let me. That is interesting. So, yeah. it, do, how many corners do you guys think, both of you guys? How many corners look up like, you know, when I'm done playing corner, I want to transition and play safety it's a, a few. couple of years in. Rod Woodson. Did he was the first he, to do he, it he, that he I know. Well, Ronnie Lott Ronnie probably Lott, was the first. Uh, Rod Woodson. Charles. Charles. Charles Woodson did Charles it. Charles Woodson did it. Uh, Kareem Jackson's doing it currently. Yep. Uh, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, Southern uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, Aeneas Williams. Well, yep. Aeneas Williams. Uh, uh, dang, it's killing me. Would you count um, Winfield? Antoine. Antoine. He played nickel more. I wouldn't say he played safety, though. But does nickel count? Rondé, I mean, uh, T, uh, Rondé's another one, too. Yeah, Rondé, yeah. too. Yeah. I, I just want to know, like, from a cornerback's perspective, who, like, do you guys actually think about these things? I had never thought about it. I mean, because yeah. you don't get to go from safety to corner, so. I said it when I played, but looking back on it now, if given the opportunity, if it if it would have gotten me another year or two, I definitely would have played safety for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I thought for sure I was gonna go play safety. You know, just uh, being able to have the uh, the football IQ, being able to tackle in space. Yeah, understanding the game. I thought I'd be it would be a smooth transition to safety. You know, but yeah, you know, just the way it is. You know how the league is now. They're getting more of the veterans out. If you look yeah, at the rest of the Look at the free agent list. It's all vets, you know. Right, tons right. Of them. So uh, that's just the way the NFL is going right now. And that's just probably my only regret. But I had a hell of a time at corner, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> playing had a great guarding group. the top, top receivers, you know, playing. Kind of kind of reforming the nickel, right? Because um, in my era, I would say it wasn't too many nickels playing straight man. Say, hey, coach, you can play cover one all day in the nickel and have this guy cover these guys, you know. Rondé and them was more of a there was zone, zone, zone. Yeah. yeah, vision, break, things like that. So I didn't really get to do that too much in my career. That's probably another thing I regret. Like, Peanut got to see the ball a lot. You know I what did. I mean? He got to I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I played going from a man-to-man -man scheme for yeah. a majority of my career, then all of a sudden going to a zone team. Like, man, I didn't know it was so much easier. It just feels so much more comfortable when you got to see the ball. Yeah. Instead the game of slows down because you see more. You get more information. Yes. You get a ton of information. So people used to always talk about how coverage, oh, y'all just a cover two team. We might be, <laughs> but I guarantee you, you ain't going to play cover two like we play because it's going to give us picks, force fumbles, takeaways. Yeah. We off the field on third down. Rod Marinelli used to always say, if you can, we used to do uh, 907, mm -hmm. cover two every time. He was like, if you can play cover two and stop the run, and stop the run, you can stop anybody. And we just, hey, I'm going to tell you the call cover two. Hey, y'all, guess what the call is? Cover two. And that was how we ran the defense. And so it was a bonus when you played cover one or cover four or whatever else. You know, your blitz. Yeah. You got what was the corner things. opposite of you? Because he was always one of the guys. I always looked up to him. Tim too. Jennings. Jennings, yeah, yes. Little short guy yeah. out of Georgia. Yeah. You didn't have to lead off with little short guy. Like, oh, you didn't sorry. have to. He is. He, uh, uh, <laughs> he did, I mean, that, well, that was our relationship because he was a little, like, little short guy. He so. is shorter, though. Tim is short. I know Tim. I, it's love, Tim. You know I love you, bro. Shout out to Tim. Tim had ball skills, Tim, man. Tim, he, Tim did. Jennings. he did. Tim, he did. He did. Jennings. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Why you call him out like that, man? It, I, I, I called him it. out. <laughs> I mean, I you just, said it. You know You know what? I tried to just fly under the radar like he did when he was like, oh, yeah, so, you know, I, I own a couple Nike houses. Yeah. Um, Nike warehouses. Oh, yeah, I got some real estate. So let's, let's dive yeah. into that. 
Uh, how do you get into Nike owning a Nike warehouse? We were yeah. talking about this earlier, and, like, that's just not your yeah. normal real estate. Yeah. Man, I got into it early, you know, early. Me and my team was able to find some – a great opportunity to be able to get in and be able to get somewhere. Really, it's it's, it's pretty much they hold all their stuff there, and really, right. it, I get to hold the hold the building. You know, make sure everything's good, make sure everything gets uh, distributed, uh, uh, shipped out right. And uh, man, that we probably my my uh, financial advisor Marque, he probably got me hooked up in that one. Probably like 2016, right after right after the Super Bowl. Yeah, and just being able to hop in on those, uh, being able to get land. I got tons of land in Oklahoma. And Texas. There's a lot of that out there, I'm sure. Um, man, it's, it is. And now they're they re rebuilding a lot of it, mm -hmm. right? Because, um, you know, we had that Tulsa massacre in 1900s, right? Mm -hmm. um, Wall Street. So now yeah. they're kind of rebuild, trying to bring that back. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, um, yeah. So um, I got a lot of land into that. Okay. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to develop some new things for our people down there and I like be able that. to help that grow. Uh, but it's just, you know. With me, it's just been taking my time, you know, just taking my time, finding the the right things. Uh, you want to find the right partners in every yeah. situation uh, because that's when bad deals and things happen. Right? right. So it's just me. I've always been patient. Yeah. Uh, I never was the person. I always had to learn because, you know, I came in the league with $2,000. Right. Come in the league. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come in the league with right, right. $20 million signing yeah. bonus, you know. I, or, call, or, I call that you're the guy who's – you're not from the lucky uh, financial sperm bank. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had to learn how to yeah. budget, had to manage my money, had to be able to say no, yeah. you know, at a fast – at a at a fast pace because I didn't have it. Yeah. Like nobody could just call me. It kind of helped me in that way too. Yeah. But it really helped me down into the line now where I'm about to be. I'm yeah. done now. I'm a year out now. So now I kind of have a little bit more establishment. Yeah. For those that don't know and all you listening, uh, every NFL player will have that moment, and they tell you you got to learn to say no. And what <laughs> saying no means. Any family member, relative, cousin, best friend, someone you went to high school, grade school, you got to tell them no. Because at some point in time, if you're the guy that says, you know what, he would never do that, she would never do that, you're wrong. Somebody At some moment in time, somebody's going to ask you for some money. Quick question I want to follow up with. What's been your favorite uh, business venture yeah. since getting man. into to, to real estate and business? What's been your favorite one? Like, man, this is this is really cool. This is really fun. Like, what's Man, uh I would say just mainly just getting the land, man. Into yeah. it? Oh, okay. Yeah, getting land that my peoples had lost, mm -hmm. you know, over just not being able to read. Simple things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, being able to get that back, put the horses and stuff on there, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's been the funnest part right there. I like being that. Able, that's dope. Get being able back. to just rebuy re the stuff back from yeah. what we lost. So now it's a, that's the whole generational wealth, and you can just pass it on and kids, grandkids. Yeah. Uncles, cousins, whoever, so it, you you keep it all in the family. Yeah. How, how important yeah. would it be though? Because you talked about how they lost it, and so as you want to get this back and then keep it in your family to make sure they understand how they lost it, and so making sure you're having that conversation. How important of a piece is that? Because you talked about how you and your financial player, financial yeah. advisor, you know, you guys have made some really smart decisions, some things that he's you know pushed you into, and you've got to learn so much about these things. Uh, how important is it going forward to make sure that your next generation of your children or your children's children understand what all this entails? And uh, that's a key thing because, you know, they grow up. They didn't grow up how we grew up, you know, yeah. mainly how we grew up. You know, For sure. They, Our kids they, are privileged. They're privileged kids. So no privileged. Doubt. Private school kids. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, With the Wi-Fi, baby. Yeah, wi <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, iPads early, you know. So yeah. um, just taking them back there and let them see it. Taking them when I have events, uh, you know, for um, for homeless or anything like that, for community events. Taking them there with me. Let them put in the work, too, you know, and uh, letting them see things, you know. Um, How old are your kids? Man, I have a I have five kids. So I have a nine, seven, mm -hmm. five, four, and uh, one. Okay. <laughs> Can't forget the one. Can't forget the one. The last one. But, um, yeah, you know, just showing the – and they're all girls. So I try to take them. To, Girl, dad, okay. Yeah, so I try to take them to the events and things like that when we're doing. Uh, my wife's done this. She's doing a great job of just helping them develop them and be women. You know, like, hey, when, when I take them there and let them know, like, this whole area, these, all these lands was, was our land at one point. Mm. 
Right. So just letting them know, because we have a, we have our own family cemetery, things like that. In the, oh, wow. Oh, it was just our own, just my family, just our family. You, know? you got those deep Oklahoma Yeah, roots. yeah, yeah. That's way deep. Yeah. Nine, yeah. <laughs> this is like, deep. yeah, okay. Yeah, deep. So uh, that's, just that's showing so them that, that we got that, and this is this is ours, and don't take take advantage of it. Don't lose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, okay, I like that. Because I, I, I think it's so cute, uh, cool that – you make sure you maintain by taking them back. My, you know, my dad's from the middle of nowhere, Alabama, mm -hmm. and they call it like the black belt. So every time we've gone back, it's kind of similar, similar to what you're saying. He's like, he's shown my kids where like his great grandfather was buried. Yeah. In the cemetery, and like, oh, well, this is his uncle, and this is a brother that died when he was very young, and and just kind of making sure you you know all these things to be able to pay it forward, yeah. uh, and that you 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 don't just kind of just. Just kind of skip over these things. I think it's very important that you continue yeah. to let your kids and your daughters know all that stuff. Really what's cool the, that your wife continues to support you, too. I've, I've read a little yeah. bit on her, too, and we'll get into that. What's too. the name of the show on the Paramount with Kevin Costner? And he's got the big ranch in Montana. Uh, ah, man. Yellowstone. 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 Yeah, you yeah. like the black version of Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Like, you yeah. keeping it in the family, <laughs> keeping it all in. I like that. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, so let me, let me pivot and change it real quick. So... This is our first time meeting. We played against each other, Super Bowl 50. Now, after all these years, do you still hold true to what you said? You know, after the post game, uh, the post game interviews, you were saying some words. I don't think you were talking trash or anything like that. You were just speaking. You know, you he was, was telling them about their game. Plan. He was just telling about the game plan. Yeah. And I think Cam might have got a little salty ab ab about it because the way the the way the setup was, you're. I guess your section was like right, literally right next to his. It was, it was bad, behind him. Bad setup. It was, like, it was, it was yeah. bad setup. Well, back to next back. To it, like, back to but, back. But with yeah. just a little sheet in between, and yeah. nobody knows that who's on the other side. Yeah, it was a bad setup. Yeah. yeah. And he had he had heard it, and I'm pretty sure he felt some type of way, and then he ended up walking off the stage. Like, does do you still you, you still hold true to how you felt and what you said and how that whole thing yeah. carried out or played out? Yeah. I never knew. It was honestly, I never knew Cam was on the other side. Yeah. So I was just talking mess, you know. <laughs> yeah. Which you should. Yeah. We, you know, that was the game plan you yeah know, it's uh it was a good game plan. bring the heat i hate to say it bring it was, the heat um they always kind of always what do you call it have chippers in the back they always had extra blockers in the back mm -hmm. for camp play action extra blockers for camp try to get funches brown and Ted again on space one-on-one -on -one routes right so when we, when they did that we would just bring the linebackers late just keep bringing them late non-stop just keep bringing them late and we know Cam likes to hold the ball a little bit longer. Yeah. So we just late delay blitz them all game, play man to man, press, get up in them, and we felt like felt like me, Roby, and Talib could cover Ted Ginn, Funches, and Brown, and and Olsen, and that was the game plan, you know. Yeah. And sick them dogs on them, <laughs> sick D. Ware, Vaughn, Malik Jackson. I was so mad that game because we was what seventeen and one at that point. You know, I I would I want to know Chris's opinion because. I know you guys won the game, but if we play ten times, how many times do you guys beat that team? Uh, and I didn't even play that game. <laughs> I would say, depending on, okay, is Peyton gonna be healthy? Because he was not healthy. He was not That's healthy. What I'm saying, he was not healthy. He was he couldn't ducks. throw the ball thirty yards. Yeah. So if if we got a healthy Peyton Manning, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. And we it, can't play y'all in Denver too. I, I, I watched. We're not playing y'all in Denver. I go back. Yeah, with the air. I go can't back the air. and I look at that game. Number one, you guys outplayed us. All right. Number two, I thought you guys outcoached us and were better prepared for all the situations. You guys made adjustments better than we did. I give you all the credit for winning the game. But I look up and I still like. There's no way that team was better than our team. I don't care if Brock Osweiler or Peyton Manning was Brock playing quarterback. <laughs> it, oh was, it was just so – Brandon was like, but that kind of lets you know exactly the team that plays the best that day is the one that wins. And that's you guys, how they You yeah. guys played better, period. Mm -hmm. And so – but I look back and I'm like, I think if we played them ten times, they may win three. We felt like our defense was the best. It was. You guys yeah, definitely balled. We felt like it was nobody we, – we had already seen the gauntlet. Like, we yeah. already seen Big Ben. Then we had to see Tom Brady. And then going to see – we wasn't really scared of Cam at all. Right. Yeah. Because we had already seen – Tom Brady was the man. So, yeah. if we got past Tom Brady and Gronk, we feel like, oh, no, it's, ain't nobody beating us. Right? The first Super Bowl that we had, we had 12 starters on defense that didn't play against Seattle. Mm. That people forget about that. Mm -hmm. Right? Me and Vaughn didn't play. A lot of – a lot of Derek Wolf didn't – a lot of our defensive starters didn't play in that game. So, we wanted – we was hungry to get to that second one. 
And um, it was a long if, – if people go back and look at that season, right, a lot of our mishaps happened because Peyton, you know, Peyton. No doubt. He was hurt, you yeah. know. We had to bring in Brock. Brock did a solid job coming in. But that was the main issue was, is, is Peyton going to be healthy, mm -hmm. right? So we got him healthy enough at the end to be able to ride that wave. At no the doubt. End. But Rolled we knew that there. defense. Yes. We knew that defense was going to carry us there. And we felt like we was and nobody could touch us on defense. That sounded like Chicago. We was always talking about the defense. You know, Lovey Smith will come in <laughs> on games and say, I remember when Pep first got to Pep, when we got Pep from Charlotte, we're playing a game or it was game week, and Lovey Smith comes in the defensive meeting room and he goes, all right, defense, we got to score two touchdowns. Yeah. And then he leaves. <laughs> and then Pep, Pep goes, hey, yo, what are you talking about, yo? What about the offense? I was like, we don't care about the offense. We got to score points on defense. And if we score points, we'll win. That's just Chicago, man. That's just the Miles of the Midway. That's what we do. And he was so intrigued by that, but he was also mad. He was like, but they paid him money, though. They yeah. got to score yeah. points. But that was just the mindset of how we were in, in Chicago. It was just like, no, nah, it's, it's a defensive city. We're, we're yeah. defense first. We don't care about offense. It's, we got to get these points. And – it it carried over. Well, they scored that game too. So yeah, I, I give you guys credit. Yeah, you guys scored. You we did really it scored twice. There it is. See, it's um, damn. He just stuck that key, and I just ah. Oh. Remember Cam fumbled. Yeah, Jay Ward could have picked it up and scored. We could have had two touchdowns. Yeah, because he got it on like the three or the four. Yeah, might as well have been a defensive touchdown yeah. too. I forgot about that one. Yeah, and they they did score before that. Oh. Um, so I think your defense actually outscored our offense that game. Possibly, yeah, and so. I think we had like. Three or four turnovers. Yeah, three or four turnovers for sure. Yeah, let's switch the subject, guys. <laughs> let's uh, switch the subject. That's I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Y'all had a great I, defense too. Like we I did. Think the Panthers was like one or two. Y'all were right there. What is y'all yeah. might have been one scoring? I think uh, scoring y'all might have been number one, um, giving up points and stuff like that, and then yards and stuff. I think everything else was us, but. Y'all were tough too, man. Luke Kinkley, Josh was playing great. Yeah, Jay no. Uh, man, y'all had a solid secondary along with the D line was crazy. So y'all definitely had a squad, man. It was you know he just ran up against one of the top defenses, man. Yeah, man. Von Von Miller. <laughs> he he owned that game. He did. All right, he, I'm he ready did. to move on. Though. I don't know about. What was your too. career highlight? And don't say that game. Career I want highlight? a personal career highlight. Man, I would say um, something that you look back on and you see it now, and it still gives you goosebumps. Like, damn, man, uh, making big play. I had a couple. I had about three big plays Pick in the one. AFC Championship game, uh, especially uh, the fourth and one. They had a fourth and one play with Brady, and they kind of. It was like a. It was a rollout, but he faked the handoff and yeah. he brought Edelman behind the line, and I left my man and stayed back <laughs> for it to leave. That was probably probably one of my best plays, just because it was, it wasn't it was straight just playing off mo playing it, off how instincts. Feels. Athleticism instincts, instincts. Yeah. 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 So and to be able to make that play in a football IQ. AFC Championship, that would be uh, probably one of my favorite plays. All right, I got another one then. If that's one of your favorite plays, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Ooh. You're an undrafted guy out of the University of Kansas, and you get to your team, and it's just like, all right, rookie. Then you were just like, yo, this is this is me. This yeah. is the NFL. Holy, holy shit. This yeah. is this is the league. What was the moment like for you? Man, I got a couple. You know, um, my first game, you know, we played the Raiders. And okay. they had McFadden at that time. It was Monday night, you know, it was the first Broncos Raiders game, my first yeah. time experiencing that in Denver, <laughs> you know. I'm like, wet I forget that's a ears. big rivalry. My yeah. eyes are big, you know, like I'm looking at Doc and Champ out here, you know. I'm just watching at this time. I'm just straight gunner, you know, at this time. Uh, I didn't start playing until like week four. That's okay, when I started playing, but man, I seen. Sorry, Doc, man. Sorry, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> I seen I seen McFadden come over there and just like, boom, just just gave Doc one of them shoulders on the sideline, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> did it to Brian Dawkins, <laughs> McFadden, and after that, I was like, okay, this is the NFL. You better be you better be ready to hit. Yeah, and then I would say my next um, welcome to the NFL game would be against uh, Aaron Rodgers. Right, we went down to Green Bay. Yeah. As soon as I came in the game, we were getting killed. So they were like, hey, just, just throw him in there. Just see what he can do. You know what I mean? Just throw him in there. <laughs> uh, first play I came in, I had, uh, dang, what was their receivers? They had Driver. Jennings. Jennings. They had Jennings. I was on Jennings. They threw him like a Nile route. Like Aaron Rodgers tested me out, just throw him a little Nile route. And I came in there and just smacked him right, at the, right when he caught it. Yeah. So that was kind of like my first time, you know, really getting real, real game mm -hmm. type uh, reps. 
and going against Aaron Rodgers, man. So after that, man, I was like, I'm not. It, off the it's always funny to me, like the plays that you remember, because you oh. forget so many plays in your oh. career. <laughs> but it's like, oh, but I remember this one time, and all he did was throw a now route, now and route. I just tackled it. But the now, but, just you got to explain. So the now route is oh, yeah. the, the receiver just he doesn't even run; he just it, stops there and turns. Yep. It's kind of disrespectful. Turns and throws yeah. the ball to him. It's really disrespectful. It's one on one. We think our guys yeah. better our guys than yours. Better than you. Yeah. Yes. What are you gonna do? Yes. I I I have an interesting couple thoughts I would like to know because I experienced this but in a totally different way and that is the NFL lockout mm -hmm. so lockout for me was I just won a Super Bowl in 2009 I was going to become a free agent uh, I was going to be a free agent because my contract was up but you had to be uh, the owners opted out so then we um, you had to be six years to be able to become a free agent an unrestricted mm -hmm. free agent so I was restricted so I lost out on a little bit of money for you on the other hand you were supposed to get drafted the year that you got that the NFL had a lockout. Yeah. You go undrafted. There's no communication between agent and Nothing. and ownership or whoever. And yeah. you just sitting there. So I want to know what that felt like because I always think about what was me in those times, but what was you yeah. to be an undrafted guy at that time, sitting back, not knowing anything about your future, and then you get a call. And you're like, bro, you got to be somewhere in like 24 hours or a day. Yeah. And then let's go. Man, that whole process, you know, I was just confused. I was hot, really, that whole time because I'm like, I started 40 some games in the Big 12. I'm, I'm shocked by that, too. Big, I've already played Des Bryant, Jordy Nelson, these guys, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Ma Jeremy Macklin. Yeah. You know, uh, all these receivers. I'm already, Crabtree, I've already faced these guys, but I'm not getting invited to into the combine and things like that. So I was, you know, I was already hot about that. And then not having any communication at all. You know, um, after the after the pro day, that was it. We couldn't talk to no scouts. You couldn't talk to yeah. people, no uh, GMs. None of that was going on. So after the draft, you know, after the draft, they usually have undrafted get picked up, right? Yeah. And um, that didn't happen that year. You know, <laughs> that year was no undrafted picked up. It was just a draft, and you kept it moving, right? Uh, so once we got to, I just I just kept my mindset. You know, people were telling me, "Hey, you might as well just give it up. You might as well start." Working on to your next, you know, your get to your next damn uh, job or you know going <laughs> just go like back that. to school, you just, know. Damn, I, the draft was over. You know, the draft was over. Yeah, you know, they they didn't really know about people didn't really know about undrafted is getting picked up right. and things like that. Did that weigh on you though? People telling you that constantly. Yeah. Oh yeah, all the time. Had to. Yeah, I can't, that's why I wanted to know this. I, I yeah. really wanted to know this. Yeah, all the time people tell me you just get ready for your next act. You know, maybe you want to go into coaching things like that. And I'm thinking on the back of my head like maybe I should be thinking about this stuff too you know and uh once july came up uh it was probably like the end of july i mm -hmm. think <clears throat> man i just got a call out of nowhere you know from uh i had the cowboys the dolphins and the broncos so i had those three like and they called like in 10 minutes like <laughs> you know which one you want to come to you know and then my agent thought that um denver would be the best spot just because they had new gm you know this was elway's first year so i was kind of like elway's first class you know me that Vaughn. Does help. Uh, uh so we wanted to start fresh you know we knew they had they had champ they had uh dawkins but they really didn't or they had goodman too the andre goodman too because he was he played for about good he played for like 11 years too at corner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um they knew that they had more older guys and um they were they were looking to uh, make a transfer, so I, they thought it would be a great spot for me to go there and uh, play, and that's why I went with Denver. Right out of nowhere, call me. Next day, pull up. They had a – we had a run test. Uh, y'all remember – y'all know Renardo Hill. Yeah. I know yeah. Hill. <laughs> we all had that run test, man. All the vets, everybody came straight off. You know, they were – that was in the lockout. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they Nobody wasn't doing was around. anything either. No. Man, I've never seen all the vets out of shape, man. We had <laughs> it's that air, ideas. though. How how was the air when you when you got there? How was that altitude when you got there? Did it affect oh, you? Like – Yeah. Oh, man. It, it, it takes about – it takes two weeks yeah. to really get fully, fully acclimated. Right? Because when you practice in the practice field – it's gonna be higher when you go to the mile high, when you go to the when you go to the stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be thicker up there, up there. So even though you're training in Denver, right? You're training in Dove Valley, right? But it's still higher when you get to the uh when you get to the stadium. So um that, you're gonna feel it either way it goes. I hated playing Denver. Don't matter how long. I hated it. It was the only time I ever came out of the game as a DB is when we went to Denver. We had like three D we had like three D B rotation because I just I was just like I can't 
I'm tapping my helmet. Yo, coach, I, I need some air. Like, couldn't do it. Hated playing in Denver. If I was if I, I was an uh, offensive coordinator Denver, I'm no huddle every time. I would totally get just so winded just walking. <laughs> Not doing anything. Like a you fat just, person. Yeah, you're like, man, what is wrong with me? Well, um, this is my next couple of questions. I'm going to let Peanut get us up out of here. Um, I want to know, do you still have that silver avalanche truck on 26s? Yeah. Because I heard about how you spent yeah. your first million. 26s? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to have them 26s now. Oh, I mean, okay. I got to get around Denver, Colorado somewhere. So and I'm going to get an avalanche. Is, man, that rim now is put so thick and that, that, that tire is so thin. I had 26s too, so I can't. Oh, we took God. those off. We definitely had to take those <laughs> <laughs> You ain't getting through no sewing no 26s. No, nah, we had to take those off. But, uh, man, I had it for... I still got it. You still I mean, got my, my it. My mom right. has More it right a, now. Oh. She's rolling it right now. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know that's kind of uh, it's kind of extra in case we need it. You yeah, <laughs> I, I, I heard now. that you kind of <laughs> use it as a, a work, work truck. truck. Yeah, it's a yep. work truck now. You know, and um, it's good for that. You know, it's it's one of the last avalanches. That's why I want to keep it because <laughs> they don't they don't even sell them anymore. You know, no. I think you got It's it's hard to find those. So I think mine's was like one of the last ones. So. I'm like, hey, we're gonna keep it until the till the wheels fall off, man. Yeah. It's still rolling. I agree, I agree. Um, and this is a, a question we like to try and delve into with uh all of our guests, and that is that uh who is on your personal route Mount Rushmore of influence? Um Oh man. And how many's on Mount Rushmore? Four, right? It's four. All right, four. Not four. It's four. Okay, four of them. It's four of them. Oh man, that's <laughs> tough. I'm gonna just go with um uh, Let's go with like Mount Rushmore teammates, good teammates that I had, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, I like that. Uh, Champ Bailey, uh, Hall of Fame guy, um, but give me, um, but give me confidence, you know. Like, hey, you can play, you can. Yeah. Coach, throw him out there with me. You know what I mean? When you mm-hmm. hear a guy like that say that, you know, uh, that gives a player confidence. Questions, because you brought him up. Champ used to do this like sideways back pedal kind of open thing. Then I saw you start doing it. Did you yeah. like? Did you learn that strictly from him? Because I, I had never seen anybody cover or do cover three like this, and you guys were some of yeah. the first ones ever doing it. Man, Champ had every tool. That's that's one thing that he taught me is that you want to have every tool. We want to be able to play sideways, play square, inch on the line, yes, reach, step on the line, um, be able to run it, be able to cover on the run, in motion, things like that, stacks, bunches. Um, so that was just that was watching him let me know that I had to put a lot of tools to my game yeah, yeah, yeah. if I was going to be successful like him. Yeah. Because I'm not six one, six two like Chet Melly <laughs> running four two. So I got to be able to have these tools tighten up, mm-hmm. and that's one thing from watching him, uh, watching those guys. They were unique, yes. fundamental. So that's what that's what really pushed me to add those tools to my really pushed me to add those tools to my game. Okay. Okay. So I always wanted to know that. Sorry. Go ahead, Chet Bailey. You got three more. Man, let me think of some other ones. Uh, Wesley Woodyard. Yeah. Y'all know Wesley Woodyard? Yeah, yeah. He's a great man, great vet. A uh, guy that definitely uh, showed me the ropes, you know, showed me how to be, come in and be a professional as an undrafted. What's, what's it going to take on special teams to be able to kind of move myself to playing defense? Yeah. So he was one. Let me think about two more teammates. Um, Demarius Thomas. Yeah. DT. DT, man. DT. RP to DT, man. Um, Good dude. Me and DT went at it every day. Every day. It wasn't – DT wasn't coming in, I'm giving you a light day today. He knew I wasn't giving him a light day, you know, but it was just that constant competition yeah. every day and then just knowing that we can go out here and battle, then we go go eat lunch at Flemings or Del Frisco and just chill. You know, that's just my guy, man, RP to DT. But he was just – he was quiet, just a quiet assassin. Yeah. And he was always the same. Yeah. So that was good. That was a good big brother to have that kind of keep you calm, kind of not. He never got too, like, emotional. You know, he was never in his feelings, things like that. Uh, even though he had times that he could have, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but DT, man, he was a perfect, he was a great example of being a big brother in the NFL, how to be a leader. <coughs> um, not just vocal, not vocal, but just being a leader, period. You yeah. Know? Uh, now, oh, man. Oh man, who should I go with it on this one? I would say um, y'all probably uh, don't know him. Well, y'all do know him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Derek Wolf. Yeah, yeah. D line. D Wolf. Uh, Wolf was such a. He was an animal, right? He brought that like. Kind of he gave he gave you that edge like, 
I know you can go out here and do whatever because I know you got this big dude behind you. He gonna, yeah. He going to be ready to fight for you. No doubt. Right? He was like that big one of that. He was the little brother, but the big, big brother. Big brother, yeah. You know. And Baby D. We always went vacations together. You know, and that was just one of my one of my partners right there. And he was just, um, he brought that, he gave you that intensity on the field at all times, right? If you come out here, you say if you're not on your stuff, mm -hmm. you just, you going through the motions a little bit out here, you're not really got that fire in you yeah. in this game, right? Nah, Wolf. going to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf going to make sure you get right. You know what I mean? He might, and he might be doing it another way. He might say, hey, Rivers, I'm going to eat your kids. What you going to do about it? Once you hear that, you be like, okay, he's serious about it today. Yeah, yeah. It's time to wake up. You know, yeah. he might say some crazy stuff. Crazy. You know, <laughs> but having him, uh, those are my, uh, those are my, Rushmore t added something to my game, yeah, mentally or physically, and uh, you know, gave me that little extra boost. And Definitely. those are my guys, man, right there. Definitely, Chris, man, hey, appreciate man. that. Appreciate that. Thanks for coming on the podcast, man. We appreciate you uh, showing some love and just giving us these stories and. And yeah, man, it's been real. Oh yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Learned a little bit more about you and your family and the 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 Tulsa land and all that. That's that's you know. Yeah, I like that. You got a lot of Black history out there, man. It is. It is. <clears throat> Didn't even know about Masker until I was older in life. So there it is. I had heard about it, but not like how we all know about it now. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, thank y'all for tuning in. I'm Peanut. That's my guy, Rome. Our special guest, Chris Harris. Please like, subscribe, follow uh, Apple Heart Radio, or excuse me, iHeart Radio app. Please go to Apple Podcasts to get your podcast. Thank y'all. That's it. That's we out. We out of here. Appreciate y'all.